Hello and welcome. We appreciate you taking out your time to uh, be with us here tonight. We are delighted and honored that you're here. If you're just joining us, go ahead and make those phone calls. Let your friends and family know that we're here. Tonight we're talking about seven ways to shift your mindset. So go ahead and like and share this video. Uh, I'll have my co-host uh, joining me here in just a second. I wanted to just get on and give you time to get logged on and get these likes and shares. Also, if you notice my new shirt tonight, I didn't get an opportunity to show it to you last night. Everything attached to me wins. Uh, you can visit our store. You can locate our store, Babes Tees, from CWF Organization website at cwforganization.weebly.com. Click on the store tab and then go down and click on the shirt and you will be automatically redirected to our online store. Also, if you haven't already got your copy of my book, Recreating a Better Me, you can find this in three formats on Amazon. So it's, it's found in paperback here, also in uh, Kindle, digital form, and audio. Tonight we're talking about seven ways to shift your mindset. Number one, the number one way to shift your mindset is to read. Reading is the key. And I know in our culture, so many of us, this is one of the hardest things for us to do is to sit down and read. A lot of you say, well, I read my Bible. And yes, reading the Bible is good. The only problem with reading your Bible is that when you read the Bible, if you're not taking in any other content, you're getting an understanding from your own perspective. So remember that when we talked about how small our environment is compared to this great big old world, we read the Bible and yet our understanding comes from our own small percep perception. So reading a variety of things and reading materials that uh, line up with the direction that we want our lives to go, that is going to expand and broaden our knowledge and our perception so that when we read the Bible or read those things that we enjoy reading to improve our lives and our skill, then we get a greater perception or a greater revelation of what that is. I can sit here all day long and pick up a history book and start to read, but if I don't have some kind of background knowledge, my perception of what I read or my comprehension of what I read, that picture that I get when I read those pages is very limited. So you have to read. This book that I, wrote uh, Recreating a Better Me, it is a easy read. But not only does it require you to read, but it requires you to go through the steps and ask yourself the questions and answer those questions in order for you to get the full fulfillment and investment from uh, what you read and in increase uh, and then therefore recreate your life for what you need it to be. It's all about your mindset. So number one, you must read. Reading is important. We go to school to learn to read, and yet we take for granted, yeah, I can read, but I don't like to read. But you should start reading. We're at home now with this pandemic that's going around. There's no excuse. Remember I told you and I shared with you that I read by audio, I hear. So throughout the day, I'm, I'm always studying, always reading things that keep my vision 
for my life in front of me. I thank you for joining me tonight. If you're already logged on with me, go ahead and like and share this video. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave the comment, your comment or your question in the comment section. Number two, attend conferences, seminars, and or webinars. That's important. You have to surround yourself with people that has like minds. You need to surround yourself with people that have like minds. And the way you do that is that you find uh, a seminar or a webinar or a conference that fits in your goals for your life. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you're here. Right now, we know that with the pandemic going on, that we cannot attend conferences and stuff. That A lot of them has been uh, limited or even canceled. But there are webinars that are on, uh, say, YouTube that are taking the place of some of these conferences. I, I always use YouTube. So if you have a uh, come across, say you're into finances, if you come uh, search YouTube for webinars, financial webinars, you'll come across those classes and they can be enriching for you, especially for people that don't necessarily like to read or get outside the house. Those are beneficial for you. So seven, we're talking tonight about seven ways to shift your mindset. So one and two, they are very important. That's how I got started. And that's how I've expanded my knowledge. One, by reading. I dedicate a lot of hours of my day to reading and studying. And two, I attend many conferences, workshops, seminars, webinars throughout the year. And it just helps broaden my knowledge and my perception of life. Thank you for joining us. I saw several of you just logging in with us. I appreciate you uh, joining us tonight. Appreciate you being here with us. Go ahead and like this video and share it. We're talking about seven ways to shift your mindset. We're up to number three. Number three, join an alliance group or a mastermind class or masterminds class. That's important. We're all connected to somebody or some group in some way. Many of us here in uh, the rural area of Southeast Oklahoma, we're connected to a church group or a women's group. I have formed a alliance uh, initiative for marketing success alliance. And we're connected with a lot of women and students where we come together. We're in our own areas of expertise and we support and market for one another. Those connections are important because what Snow may know, I may not know, and she's able to come in and teach and train and impart what she does do well into the other women and men within that organization. So that's important to connect yourself. Join those alliance groups. Join those mastermind class. It doesn't have to be something ongoing. You don't have to meet once a week. You can come together and decide what's going to be beneficial for you and that group. So we're talking tonight about seven ways to shift your mindset. If you do these things, if you just do these things for 30 days, it's going to help shift your mindset because the more you practice a thing, it's going to become more habit forming for you. Number four, find a mentor and or an accountability partner. Find a mentor and or an accountability partner. That's important. It, it's easy to say, well, I can hold myself accountable. But then when you think about it, how many things have you started and not finished? 
How many things do we start every year and not finish? Did y'all start the year off with uh, New Year's resolutions? No. No. <laughs> no. Because I'm, I just see it as why didn't you do it yesterday? Why does it have to be a new year when you started? Like, I see no purpose of a New Year's resolution. Right. I just didn't have one. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of you watching, started out with a New Year's resolution. I have one question for you. How is it going? Because if you are just depending on yourself to hold yourself accountable, oftentimes we'll drop the ball. Because like I said, life happens. And when life happens, we, we look at it as a stop sign because those are the habits that we built up over the years. So we use it as a stop sign. And when that, we hit that bump, we say, well, it must not have been meant or the Lord knows my heart and all that. We make excuses in which we've learned already that, that that's not a behavior that's just going to go. So you have to find you a, a mentor and or an accountability partner. And that's what joining an alliance group does for you. Each week, the, the women and men in my alliance group, they get an email. They have to meet with me occasionally, one-on-one, -on -one, and we have to have meetings. And I hold them accountable for the goals that they say that they have for their lives. And you send it every Monday. Every Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> every monday so that gives me something to strive for as a mentor to others but also it holds me accountable knowing that i have others depending on me i am so glad that you're here with me tonight we're here with us tonight we're talking about seven ways to shift your mindset and if you practice these seven skills for 30 days i can almost guarantee that there's going to be a shift in your mindset you're going to begin to form new habits and adapt, adopt a more positive, desirable mindset, which we talked about uh, on last night. Number five, listen to motivational audio and or video. Uh, oftentimes, reading is just not our thing. But if we can find a daily and I mean start your day, motivational video or audio, that's a good place to start. Because the more you're feeding that good stuff into your mental capacity, the more you're going to want to desire that. When I first started listening to motivational tapes and or videos, it was hard. I had to start with like 15 minutes a day with it. Now I'm up to about five hours a day just listening and let it just feed my spirit over and over and over again. I shared with you last night that Les Brown was one of my go-to mentors for listening to his motivational speeches. They're so encouraging. And I listen to that, and the more I listen to it, I get new revelation of things that I know I've heard over and over and over again. So that's what it's all about. Find something that you enjoy, though. Find one that you enjoy and that works for you. And I'm not talking about uh, the people that you listen to on Sunday morning preaching sermons to you. That's, that, that's not what I'm talking about. You, it's, it's time to expand our perception of things. Because even our preachers, our teachers, uh, and leaders, and so even they need to expand and broaden their perception sometimes. And oftentimes we don't know if they're expanding their perception of things. We don't know if they're uh, really studying and, and, and seeking God like uh, we believe that they are. We really don't do that. I mean, we really don't know that they do that. So they can only give us what they have. But I know that the word of life says study to show yourself approved, right? So you the, the only way you're going to start to uh, perceive things in a different light and expand your knowledge is if you break outside the 
box of just your small thinking. And oftentimes that's what it is. We know a little something, so we're satisfied with just that. But I know personally that I have a lot of gift and talent and desires within me. And so it's not enough for me to just stay small. It's hard to fit me inside of a box. I wasn't created that way. I was created to stand out. I was created different. And so I'm always just thirsty for knowledge, thirsty to and hungry to, to know more and to be um, engaged with more things. I want something more than this. There's more to life than what I've experienced so far. So I'm always just digging and seeking and, and, and pressing forward to so that when I die, I want to die knowing that I left something here. It's not enough for me. If I die today, then I, I got so much more with me that i would be taken to the grave with me. So that's not enough. There's so much more I want to learn, so much more that I want to share. And so I have to keep my mind fresh and stayed on positive things so that it, it prunes all that negative stuff out of me so that I can give you my best. When I'm at my best, I can give you my best. Number six, monitor self-talk and your vocabulary. Now, for some of us, this is a tough thing. I often say it's so much easier for me to look at you and to tell you how beautiful you are and, and how pretty you are and, oh, I like your shoes, you look great. It's easy for me to look at somebody else and tell somebody else that. It's harder if, you, if, if, if you hadn't practiced this and built yourself up to this point to tell yourself that. It's easy for us to look at a woman, another woman or another young girl and become envious of that because of the image that we have in our own self-perception of ourselves. So if you don't have good self-thoughts, if we don't speak good things about ourselves, then that hinders our mindset. So in, in, in instead of embracing another woman or another young lady, we become jealous. And we have to be around one another. We have to be around one another. So to have a mindset of jealousy and envy toward another, it just don't fit. So when you practice good self-talk and begin to shift the vocabulary that you speak about yourself, it makes all the difference in the world. You will never look at another woman the same. You will never look at a young lady, another young lady the same when you feel more confident in yourself. If you're with us tonight, go ahead and hit those heart buttons. Let us know that you're understanding and you're following everything that we're saying tonight. I am glad you're here. If you have a question or a comment, feel free to go ahead and leave that in the comment section and I'll be sure to address that with you. We're talking tonight about seven ways and practices that you can do to help shift your mindset within 30 days. If you practice these things within seven, uh, 30 days, these seven things that I'm sharing with you tonight, I can promise you that you're going to begin to adopt a, health, a healthier mindset, healthier thoughts. And we're up to number seven. Be selfish with your time and who you allow to occupy it. And I know that all these lessons are overlapping, and yes, that's what they do. This is what we call practice and being intentional. If you're intentional with wanting your mindset to shift from, uh, from negative to positive, then these things you have to do. There's no way we can get around it. You have to be selfish with your time and who you allow to occupy that space with you. I can't keep hanging around negative, uh, critical, condescending people 
and think that I'm going to produce positive things. I know how much I can tolerate at a time. So it's up to me to set the boundaries for the time I'm going to allow negative critical people within my space. I'm not going to prune them out all together. Not when I'm strong enough to handle it. I, it may be only five minutes. I can maybe only tolerate you five minutes. And after that five minutes, if you don't re remove yourself, then I'm going to be the one removing myself. I mean, it happens and I do it all the time. I can go to a, a place and uh, someone's in that space. It's okay to be friendly and, and say hello and, and, and see how things go. But when you know that you've reached your limit of tolerance, then rather than hurt somebody's feeling, it's easy to uh, get up and remove yourself and excuse yourself and, and head home or whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you stay in a positive frame of mind. Because we learned that last night, everybody's personalities and attitudes do not align and fit with ours. Ladies, do y'all have something that y'all like to add to this tonight? We're talking about seven ways to shift your mindset. And if you do it within 30 days, I can promise you that you're going to start developing better mental habits. Oh, I don't have anything to add. You don't have anything to add? Okay, Snow. All right. Now, I know some of you are saying, you're telling me all this, but you're not telling me how to do it. Well, tonight I got a bonus for you. I'm going to share with you some of the people or uh, that I consider my mentors, people that I listen to on a daily uh, basis, and also some of the books that I've read from some of these people. Number one, uh, easy read. You can start with this here. It's available on Amazon. It's available in paperback. It's available on Kindle. And it's also available on audio from Audible. So easy read. And if you get it on Kindle or Audible, you can probably even get you a copy uh, free. But nonetheless, it's available. It's a re easy read. So yours truly. Also, I mentioned before Les Brown. Another, Jim Rohn. Tony Robbins, Miles Monroe, Eric Thomas, Zig Ziglar, Susie Orman, Steve Harvey, Denzel Washington, Earl Nightingale, Dave Ramsey, Norman Vincent Peale, Chris Gardner, what is his name? And Nick Vesicic, he's the little fella that goes out and does the, the mm -hmm. he, he's the fella that goes out and uh, does motivational uh, speaking and stuff, but he doesn't have any uh, extremities. Uh, his, his name is Nick, and the last name is spelled V-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I -I -C. So look it up. These, this is where I started. So I'm giving you the resource. If you're serious about shifting your mindset, that's a good place to start. To find reading materials, to find conferences and webinars that these people have already put together. These people have, all, have already lived their life. Some have gone and passed on, but they left their resources here for us to utilize. And they've done it. They've done it well. They're success, they were successful in what they've done. Also, uh, John Maxwell, he's another that, that I've studied occasionally. So tonight I've given you seven ways to shift your mindset. I've also given you a bonus of resources of the people to where uh, I've studied using the materials that they've left out for us to uh, enjoy and to learn from. They were successful. And so they fit in my line of study in the direction that I want for my life. So I've studied those. So I appreciate you being here with me tonight. 
I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, same time. I'll get on here as quickly around 10 o'clock as I can, not before. There's a lot of good resources, a lot of good lives that I see going around Facebook all throughout the day. If you don't tune in here with us late at night, please tune in to somebody throughout your day and empower yourself, educate yourself throughout the day. Don't just use this time during this pandemic to feel sorry for yourself. Use this time to expand your knowledge and to develop healthier habits for you and your family moving forward. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna probably move into talking about better relationships. So I look forward to seeing you and we hope that you have a good night.